This is one of the reasons you come to a Michigan State. To play on this kind of stage, to play in this kind of event, and to play in this kind of you know, championship competition. I really take pride in you know, trying to make all the guys feel comfortable on their skates. And you know, if they do happen to lose an edge in, in during the game, I try to get in here and get it back as fast as possible. Being a Detroit area kid, I grew up watching the tournament. It was pretty much a holiday tradition in this area for families to go watch the college teams because they weren't all that accessible during my youth and growing up to watch them play. So this was one of the times a year where you could actually see them. And so I aspired to play at a school that played in this tournament. So it's always been a big deal to me. My first college hockey game I ever watched live was uh, my dad randomly took, took me to a Michigan versus Michigan State game at the GLI. And uh, we were sitting kind of close to the glass, and I got to see the bands and the nosebleeds and stuff, and I thought it was pretty cool. Right after Christmas, so everyone's kind of still, you know, at home with their families and things like that, and it's something for, for them to get together to do. And you know that there's a few more people watching probably these games than there are other ones that are on TV. So definitely there's a little bit bigger spotlight, and it makes it all that much more fun for us. It's not cold yet, eh? I don't feel too bad. I'm gonna... You grew up playing outside in, in the winter, and to be able to play outside, uh, you know, at Comerica Park, is unbelievable. You know, you grew up just you know going to Tigers games and seeing different things there, and and it, it was pretty unbelievable. You know, being able to go out on the ice and, and play. You walked out there, and there's this huge park, and I sit up there and watch Tiger games all the time. And it's kind of weird being on the other side of that. To be in the visiting locker room and know that all those guys, like the Red Sox in the playoffs last year, and all those big teams that have come in here and played there is pretty cool. It's really special because it's it's. You know, part of a special moment that uh, all of uh, the participants, our guys, and all the other teams are going to really cherish forever. They'll always remember this experience. A little sticky out there, huh? I didn't know you were a pretty boy. Yeah? First time, I think, you know, most all of us strapped on skates. You know, the Michigan guys, anyway, was probably on a pond or on a backyard rink when we were little. And that's where, um, you know, you get to go out and just have fun with the game. And you first learn to fall in love with it. And I think, uh, you know, you get to do things and try things out there that you wouldn't when you're, you know, practicing with your teams and stuff like that. You get to play with all your, you know, your friends and family. So it's really neat growing up and being able to play outside is uh, something you look forward to. Me and my brothers would go to our friend's house who lived on a pond and we'd go around there and it wasn't just like a couple hours of an event. It was like you'd skate, you'd get off, you'd eat, you'd get back on, skate till dark and like, we were, I remember one time we ended up, uh, my dad got out a chainsaw and cut a hole in the ice and we ended up jumping in like the freezing lake and stuff like that. So it's not really just pond hockey, it's a whole thing. You remember your rosy cheeks and your cold toes and your runny nose and you know how much you enjoyed it. It seemed always the later you were out at night, the, the better the ice was and the crisp sound of the puck. My dad built me and my brother a rink in Chicago that we grew up playing on until like fifth grade or whatever when we moved. Um, and we'd be out there all hours of the night until we had to go to bed or something, you know, crawling out on our hands and knees so we didn't mess up our skates. And just being out there and being able to do stuff on your own, it, it, stuff like, like this, like this tournament outside, brings back those kind of memories, so it's nice. Catching your breath there, Darns. One too many Christmas cookies, huh? Right, big back. This is one of the reasons you come to a Michigan State. To play on this kind of stage, to play in this kind of event, and, uh, uh, and, and to play in this kind of you know, championship competition. So uh, it's a unique experience. Uh, we don't take that for granted. We very much appreciate it. And uh, it's really important to the core of our program that uh, you know, we have success in this tournament. My name's uh, Tom McGee. I'm the equipment manager for the Michigan State hockey team. I'm starting my uh, 33rd year here. My main responsibility is uh, outfitting all the players 
and keeping everything inventoried and uh, clean and ready to go. Like a little short so the knob goes in. Ah, like the top of that probably. I don't know, just so it's cool. He's in a role that's invaluable to the team. Um, equipment is a vital part of helping players uh, achieve their goals and help them uh, achieve their potential. And so um, he plays that role, whether it's sharpening skates, whether it's uh, you know, meeting the needs that they have, and it's different for different guys and little nuances to certainly spoiling our players rotten with all the Nike wear that we get. Uh, he is a pivotal guy on our staff that uh, our players very much rely on. Whenever you need something, um, equipment-wise, I mean anything, you just go to T, that's the first guy you go to. and He's huge, he, uh, he prepares everything for us, he gets everything we need, so it's, he's a really big asset. You know, he's definitely been around the block a few times and, and you know, there's not too much he hasn't seen, so you, know, you trust him and know that he knows what's going on most of the time better than what you do. The favorite part is the games, I mean it's fun to you know, get, get everybody ready and uh, do my role in, in uh, preparing the guys for the game. And, and you know, have them see the guys perform on the ice and out there and get, uh, you know, goosebumps and get into the game. He's a critical guy in, in game ops. Uh, he stands on our bench and is working the stopwatch and communicating with me, uh, measuring the length of the time of our shifts, uh, each and every shift. And at the same time, we might have a guy lose an edge or break a stick or whatever, have a helmet or a, a, an equipment adjustment that he needs to make on the spot. And those circumstances, certainly happen. The most important part of uh, playing hockey is the skating part of it. So if they're not comfortable on their skates, obviously, you know, they're probably not going to perform as best as they can. I mean, so yeah, I mean, that's probably the most uh, important part of my job. And I really take pride in, you know, trying to make all the guys feel comfortable on their skates. And, you know, if they do happen to lose an edge and, and during the game, I try to get in here and get it back as fast as possible because then the coach doesn't have to juggle the lines. He's awesome. He's right there for us, you know, whatever we need, whether it's a skate issue, a stick issue, um, anything else, you know, he's the first one there and, he, and it happens so fast, you know, half time you don't even realize, you, you know, you're out for a second, but most time you don't even miss a shift. He's uh, unbelievable at what he does and, um, you know, this weekend I'm sure he'll have to be on the top of his game with a few more challenges. This outdoor game will be different. Uh, I mean, obviously on the road, I take basically a mini equipment room with me. I have a trunk that basically has all the extra stuff like t-shirts and uh, socks and helmet and any extra stuff and I take a skate sharpener, a glove dryer, but obviously for this outdoor game, uh, I have to get, uh, I'll take each guy, I'll have a pair of uh, long underwear and I'll be getting a, a thermal hood that the football players wear underneath, so they can put underneath their helmets. Like our entire auxiliary personnel team, they play a very pivotal role to helping us have success. And we're very fortunate at Michigan State um, with both Tom and all the others, Dave, Doc Norris. Um, they're a very experienced group, and that experience is invaluable in helping our team. It's fun, keeps me young, so I'm excited to go to come to work every day. Enjoy the environment. The best way to enjoy it is to have success with it. And uh, we're very capable of winning this thing. And you gotta believe it. We believe it as a coaching staff. You gotta believe it. When you start believing it, then you'll go make it happen. Shoot that puck, eh, sweet? Rockets chilling. Both 
these schools decided to go old school for us from Michigan State. Their jerseys reflect 1966 then when they won a national championship for Michigan Tech. It's the 1960 campaign. Fabulous look for both these schools. Huskies are starting behind their goaltender Copley and they're happy to be over there, Matt, right now to get the game underway. Opening period been physical but scoreless. Look at one, one down low. Shot. Oh, oh. save made by Hillary. Follow up shot. I think he got a piece of that as well. Support. There's a thing that he to this. Oh, here we go. There's a chance. Shot. Oh, and then Hildebrand's got it. He wasn't sure he had it. Got it by the cheater. Alex Pitan. There's a two on one for Michigan Tech. Shot saved oh. by Hildebrand. No rebound either. Great save. Called for winds and fires, and a oh. shrug save made there by Copley. We just have to get the puck to the net. So if you're on the point, we don't have to have a big boomer. Just get it through and get it there. We start this second period with a very evenly played game between these two squads. The forward. Good save by Hildebrand on that drive. Two big saves. The back, good opportunity. There they have her away and save by Hildebrand. <laughs> To start oh. playing hockey. There's a first goal tonight. Michigan Tech got a rebound. They got a two on one. He'll hustle in, wrist a shot, and a save made by Copley. Great Lakes Invitational. One goal on the board, courtesy of Jacob Johnstone of Michigan Tech. Oh, it is a one shot game. Come on. Tommy Anastas has a little bit of work to do, I'd say, to get his guys offensively on the board. Lock shots. Jake Kelly with a shot. Oh. Oh. And Barry ties it up. Oh. There you go. We are tied at one. Rats in basketball. There are rink rats too. Here's a shot and a save made by Hildebrandt. Good opportunity for Michigan Tech as they bounce right back. Go up for a little skate. Score! Oh! Spartans take the lead on a fortuitous hop past Copley. And the team in green is up two to one. That yeah, thing just no died. Oh. It's in front, they score! Wow. To deadlock it at two. Up ahead, here's an opportunity, walking in, shot saved oh. by Hildebrand! 2-2 Two -two at the end of regulation. Well, here we go, taking the shootout, that's what we got. Sitting against Hildebrand. Yeah. Denied. <laughs> Alex Patan, good, good speed. Shot oh. and a glove save! Oh. William Haig, good speed, lost that yeah. goal. scored! Good. Backhand buried at top shelf! Last chance yes. for the Huskies to tie it. An extended oh. they do! Anything right into speed it. Change, yep. everything. Ryan Fern to win it for the Huskies. Yeah. Does! And Woo. Michigan Tech advances! Be emotionally engaged. Lots of, lots of communication, lots of talking. Play with discipline, but with lots of emotion. You come here to play it. Part of it is this series. One of the reasons you come to a Michigan State is to play in this series of games against these guys. Third place game of the Great Lakes Invitational, and you couldn't ask for more. Michigan against Michigan State. Michigan, Michigan State, and we are underway. Carrying it in. Quick shot. Oh, oh score! My goodness! Thomas Ebbing somehow beat Steve Racine, and the Spartans lead 1 0. Keeping it in. Now in the slot, quick shot saved oh. by Hildebrand. Guptel had a big opportunity. Out there now the turnover. Shot save, rebound, shot goes wide. shot but the rebound is loose out in front. Racine couldn't smother it. Now the shot gets through. He steers it to the corner. Now out in front. Good pass in us. Great save by Hildebrand. Puck loose. Out in front. Still loose. Still bouncing around. one nothing game. Spartans on top. Yeah, don't stretch until we have full possession and get into a setup breakup. 
Yeah. First period, Jake Hildebrand was the story. Guys, second period, Wolverines just continue to do what they did in the first to continue to apply the pressure. I think Tom and Ashton are very happy if they continue <laughs> to get the scoring chances that they got in the first period. Oh, quickly ahead, Spartans come in, onside, shot save, rebound, saved by Racine. Had a great chance, oh, oh Racine on the doorstep. Save. More rush for the Spartans, shot oh. save, Racine. In the Michigan zone, chance on oh. the oh. shot hit the goal post. And the Wolverines could be lucky that they're only down one to nothing. Whether it's taking a hit, blocking a shot, being strong to make a play, whatever it is, that's what it takes. Oh, get back to Nieves, shot, oh. and a save by Hildebrand. Quick side oh. pass, shot, score! Wow. Matt Perry with a second in two nights. Oh, it made it happen. Well, this is what they got to do the rest of the year. Oh, there's a the shot, save. score! Well, Fred Darnell beats Racine, and it's 3-0 Michigan State. And the Michigan State Spartans, impressive all night long, come away with a 3-0 win over the third-ranked Michigan Wolverines. First shutout in more than four years for the Spartans against the Wolverines. You know what it takes. Have success. You just saw it. There was tons of sacrifice. There's putting your teammates first. There was taking a hit to make a play. There was emotion. There was discipline. All the little things that we talk about all the time. So guys stepped up today in a fun environment and uh, we took a step as a team. So now we can enjoy it a little bit. Good job. Yeah. Thank you.